welcome to my October plan with me where I'll be setting up some spreads and planning for the month of October. My spreads are inspired by the dark academia trend and I'll be explaining a bit more about what this trend is and how it started. I had a nice craft paper frame that I used for my cover page. Then using my black Archer and Olive notepad I cut out a rectangle that's the same size as the craft paper one and this is going to be in the background. I cut up a piece of white dot grid paper to go inside the frame and this is where I'll write up October for my cover page. I used my fountain pen which feels like what a dark academic would do to write up October in cursive. Dark Academia is an aesthetic on social media that romanticises classic literature with a passion for knowledge and learning. It stems from European culture and English private schools. It started on TikTok in 2020 in response to schools and colleges shutting down and it became a huge trend with a cult-like following. It was initially criticised for potentially encouraging classist attitudes, but now it's just evolved into a subculture that encourages knowledge, learning, writing, poetry, the arts or classic literature. The hobbies of dark academics are things like knitting, painting, gardening, interests are reading, philosophy, playing instruments and practising calligraphy. Their rooms are full of cut books and cups of tea and antiques like old typewriters. It also has its own fashion based on vintage or secondhand items with items like tweed blazers, knitwear, glasses and blacks, browns, beiges and tan colours. I drew up a flower made of black spots over the top of the craft frame. The rough squiggles give it more of an old vintagey look and the dark academia vibes. Over on the next page, I used my grid spacing ruler to divide the page into halves and find the middle. I drew a line above and below it to create a section for my quote. I'll be using different quotes from literature throughout my spreads to embrace the dark academic vibes. I found so many good quotes from literature that really inspired me or made me feel braver or stronger, which you'll see throughout this video. This one is a quote from Mary Shelley. Beware, for I am fearless and therefore powerful. If you're like me and often looking for inspiration to be fearless, this is a great quote, reminding us of how empowered we are if we overcome our fears. I always have fear whenever I share things online or share more of myself with others in fear that I won't be able to communicate things properly or that I'll be judged or misunderstood. So quotes in my journal that remind me of courage, strength and fearlessness are always really helpful. Of course, a dark academia theme has to involve books. So I have these pages from a book to stick on the top and the bottom of the page. Using a black Tombow brush pen, I coloured in a strip above where the quote will go. On a side note, I've given up on glue tape for a while. It just seems to get stuck and not work. So I'm using a good old fashioned glue stick from my kids arts and crafts drawer. I do like the precision of glue tape. So if you use one that works well, please can you tell me which one you use down in the comments. And while we're on the comments, I'd love to know what you think of this theme at the end of it. Your feedback is so helpful for me. So if you do like this setup in the end, drop me a heart in the comments to let me know. I used my favourite gold acrylograph pen to draw some simple dark academia designs on top of the black. If you're ordering from Archer and Olive, I have a code which is Raksha10 that gives you 10% off and it helps me out a little bit too. Finishing off with some grid washi tape around the edges of the page. Next up, I'm using some textured paper that I got from Stationery Pal. I did a big stationery haul with all the amazing things I got from Stationery Pal in another video, and this was one of them. I think sticking these down as they are is a really simple way of making pages look beautiful without having to do too much else. And seeing different textures in your journal just feels quite aesthetically pleasing. I drew a border around the four corners of the pages Again, I love a border because it's an easy way to make a page look more complete, like adding jewellery to a simple outfit almost. 
This spread is dedicated to doing one hard thing a day, inspired by a book I read called Grit. Grit is the combination of perseverance and passion. It's putting in effort towards long-term meaningful goals. To encourage more of a grit mindset, I'm encouraging myself to do one hard thing a day. And I don't mean have a cold shower every day or put myself through pain. I mean something small that feels hard to me. Sometimes I find it hard to sit down and film a video, but when I do it, I feel really happy about it. So my hard thing one day could be to just start filming that video that I've got in mind instead of talking myself out of it or go to bed early instead of watching TV till late. I made this monthly log stencil, which is just six squares down and four squares across to be able to draw boxes for a double page calendar layout. To use this, you first need to look at how many rows you're gonna need for that month. Some months have four weeks, some five weeks, some six. October has five weeks, so five rows, and the top row only has three columns for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. There's a lot of flexibility with this type of stencil, so you need to decide how many days you're gonna put on your page. I want Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday on the left hand page and Thursday to Sunday on the right hand page. So I'll show you how to do that and what it looks like. I mark off the first square that I'll need and the last square to stop me from drawing the boxes that I don't need for this month. I only need three columns on the left page for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. On the right hand page I need four columns and the very top row needs to only have three columns at the very end for Friday, Saturday and Sunday. I decided to draw an extra row of boxes above the ones that I need for the month to put in some doodles and the days of the week. Then put in your dates for October from the 1st to the 31st. I've put the stencil up on my Etsy shop for you to buy if you think it's something that'll be useful for you. It does still require some thought to decide on how you're gonna lay out your big calendar and how many columns and rows you need for it. But it gets you equally sized boxes across the pages quickly without having to count dots and spaces. And on that note, good news, the long awaited 2022 calendar stencils are now available to buy in my Etsy shop. Loads of people have been asking when they'll be ready. Grab yours now so you can be ready to set up your new journals for next year. So many of you order from the US and if you are, get your orders in now before the Christmas rush so that they can reach you faster. I drew up some dark academia inspired doodles, rough scratchy doodles to stay with the theme. I added a reminder to the corner to say, I will do one hard thing a day, even if it's really small, hard to me, not necessarily to others. The quote I'm putting on this page is by Ane Nim. Life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage. No, my camera died as I was setting up my monthly log without me realizing. So here we are with my monthly log almost done already. I drew a border around the edges to write up a quote. I did a list on the left for my monthly log and I divided the right hand page into quarters using my grid spacing ruler, colouring the headers in black and gold. The quote I'm writing around the pages is, There is no gate, no lock, no bolt that you can set upon the freedom of my mind. And this is by Virginia Woolf. What a great quote. It was quite therapeutic writing this up and seeing the words repeated over and over again, slowly creating a home for themselves in my mind. On the right hand page I have a section for my focus for October and tasks that I can think of right now, what I want to read and what I want to learn. The platform that I use for my learning is Skillshare who are kindly sponsoring this video. I use Skillshare to take classes on productivity, art, photography and so many other creative subjects. Recently I took the class Learn How to Draw fun and easy exercises for nailing proportion, shading and more. I draw in my bullet journal all the time, but I still kind of fear it because I've never really learned how to draw formally in any way. <laughs> the teacher, Brooke Glazer, speaks about learning how to see things differently when you want to draw them. She shares techniques for being able to draw proportions accurately and quickly, like the clock method, grid method and plotting method. I particularly liked her explanation of shadows, the different types of shadows and where to place them, and how to create a unique drawing by using multiple reference images. 
She really gets you thinking about the detail that images are made up of, and now I'm always breaking down images in my mind to simplify them and make it less daunting to draw them. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Whether you're a beginner, pro, dabbler or master, it's a chance to explore new skills, deepen existing passions and get lost in creativity. I love that there are no adverts and there are always new premium classes being launched so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Back to the spread. When it comes to filling out my monthly log, I usually start by highlighting the weekends so I can see each week separately. Then I refer to my future log to see any events I have for the month already and I write them in. Birthdays, school holidays, deadlines, parties, anything that I know about at this stage. My focus for October will be to finalise my end of year content and products. The end of the year is always a busy time for bullet journal creators, so there's lots to prepare and I want to be ready in advance to avoid stress and chaos later. There are a few tasks that come to mind for October already, so I jotted these down so I don't forget them and can build them into my weeklies throughout the month. I have some books on my bookshelf that I've been meaning to read, so this month I plan to read some of those. In they go. And finally, a couple of classes I plan to check out are Procreate Animation and Modern Journaling because I have some ideas for a journaling class that I might want to create and so I thought it would be good to see what's out there to make sure that what I want to share isn't just the same as what's already provided out there. After the rather busy setup before, I'm calming things down here with some lovely textured paper again. Something I love doing when I want to be more efficient with my setups is setting up two spreads in one go and basically just mirroring the design of the first spread to create the second. So I stuck down two lots of textured paper and two lots of grid paper for my headers. The first is going to be my simple things list. The second will be my dark academia mood board. I used my simple things stencil as always for the simple pleasures I can enjoy this October. Colouring in the headers with one of my favourite Tombow brush pens 942. My simple things list for October is make a warming soup with autumn flavours, jump in crunchy leaves, curl up with a blanket and watch a scary film, create a dark and cosy mood board, go pumpkin picking. I finished off with the border that I did earlier, again applying it to both pages. I added a rustic branch in the middle. For my mood board, I found some pictures on Pinterest that represent dark academia. Generally, it's dusty old vintagey things, books, coffee, instruments, typewriters, even a cobbled street made me think of a street that a dark academic would like to wander down. This really brought the theme to life. The quote I included on this page was, Is there no way out of the mind? by Sylvia Plath. Finally, my weekly spread for the first week of October. I used my grid spacing ruler to divide the page into four rows. A journal page doesn't divide perfectly into four. There are two white spaces spare, which I left at the top of the page. I divided the top row into four columns. The first column is going to be used for my October header and a mini calendar. The next seven columns will be my days of the week to write up any events for the week. You can use this area for events for each day or just some freestyle journaling for each day if you want to, or for daily gratitude. The rest of the left hand page is for my tasks. I'm using a version of the Alistair method again, so I have the days of the week along the left to mark off when I will do each task, and I can easily migrate the task to the next day with another mark if I don't get it done. I explain this some more in my September plan with me. I'm using the right hand page for some categories. The first is the focus areas for the week. Then I have fun, little things to do for fun that week, Finally, a section for things that I can do for mindfulness that week. The quote for this page is, I am my own muse. 
I am the subject I know best, the subject I want to know better, by the artist Frida Kahlo. Here's the flip through. Drop me a comment or heart in the comments if you like this setup or if you just enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.